Hello everyone, Rob here again. Uh, another book, another day, another book. Um, this one, X-Men number one by Jim Lee and Chris Claremont from 1990, I think it is. Psst, I'm here too. Oh yeah, there's someone else here with me. My brother John is with us again. Johnny, say hi. Uh, hi, I'm here too. He is here. Um, we will, we wanted to, we were talking with each other about what books, if we we're going to get together, what, what ones do we want to talk about together? And this is one that we both kind of agreed. Um, I think mostly for me, because of the nostalgia significance of it at the time, this was the coolest, neatest, greatest, biggest thing that ever happened in comics at the time. Yeah. Um, and I think we'll talk about Jim Lee. You haven't done anyone on any on Jim Lee yet. Not yet. Um, I think we'll talk about his art and how it was on these books and how it progressed and how it is today and stuff like that. But like this was a significant impact on my in, influence, and I'm sure, and I know yours. Yes. Of for our artistic endeavors. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is actually the, the copy I bought off the stands years ago when it first came out. And a couple years ago, three, four years ago, uh, Jim Lee came to town mm -hmm. and uh, did a signing and I was able to get him to put his signature on the book, which that was kind of a magical moment. I'm like, I, I, uh, I don't use that very often, but getting to stand right there with Jim Lee and say hi and, shake his hand and he signed two things for me. I was just floating. I was glowing. It was just the greatest thing ever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this book, this is the one I actually bought at the time. Um, everyone knows. I mean, the thing about this book is everyone's talked about it a million times. There's not really much to add to it in terms of what it means and the content, but what it means to us is kind of interesting. Um, one thing we were talking about off camera before we started, this is one of multiple covers. We have another one here with us. This is the... Um, what is it, the special edition? Yeah. Would that be what we would call it? Um, there were multiple covers, and you kind of, you'd pick up a book, and you'd have one of multiple different covers. But this has a gatefold cover that has them all on there. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is, you'll see here, Wolverine's claws are out on both hands. On this one, it's only out on this hand. Um, the reason that I read about is because in this box on certain um copies this was a picture of captain america's head and they didn't want his claws stabbing into captain america's head now this one it only has the barcode printed there was different versions printed for different reasons it seems kind of ridiculous but they removed his claws kind of unnecessary yeah it's it's interesting looking at these side by side to seeing like some of the different the other differences obviously like there's some coloring differences like this this sheen on his his shoulders and it's not really there. Yeah. Um, but you got kind of a little one on his muscle muscle there, but then even the backgrounds, like obviously the titles are different, but he like, there's this weird cackle that's probably from the other gateful, like the other covers and more of the covers that just gets disappears. Well, the interesting thing, the original artwork, he drew the X-Men logo that you see here into like the Rocky backdrop. And this one, they just covered it over and just put it, you know, slapped up the, typical x-men logo but this is actually drawn by jim lee so that's way more interesting but i could say they want to stick with their regular yeah. corporate logo the the white in the blast yeah I call that is way more to yeah than it's really one. interesting um why they did like this is a glossy coated paper this is newsprint um for some reason the newsprint looks better to me and i can't justify why maybe it's just my i'm just my connection to the original version that i've seen yeah um, while we got this here, let me just pop open the, the whole gatefold cover um, to see it. We're not going to get all of it on camera. Oh, close. We can get three for sure. I mean, this this was definitely the cover everyone wanted. I had this one over here. Just the Magneto. Of Magneto. Yeah. And these other ones are cool. You know, sexy Psylocke, sexy Rogue, awesome Gambit, awesome Colossus. <laughs> it but this is the one. It kind of, it gets, I don't know. This is the, if I had to choose, I would take this one over anything. And then this second and then that third as far as the X-Men. So it's kind of in descending order of how cool I, if I could choose which ones I wanted. They're all great. All these figures are amazing. I always thought that that rogue, I mean, Psylocke's always the hot one, but I thought that rogue image was just super yeah. good. And I also really like this Jean Grey. 
that pose and her energy that's emanating out there. And the, the ice slide coming all the way through. Yeah, it could, you know, uh, again, why do they have these little lines on here? What does that describe besides absolutely nothing? But this collected edition was really cool because it had all the covers and um, inside the book, there was a giant poster that is connected to the inside of on both of them. So uh, trying to get that to show up. We drew every character. From all the books. All X the books. X-Factor, X-Force, right? New Mutants. Uh, Excalibur's in there. Yeah. So if you see a character you don't know, uh, that's Excalibur. <laughs> um, but I'm like, I would never, unless I had multiple copies of this book, which was their gimmick, which is why it sold so many, I'd have to have multiple copies of this book to then rip the cover off to display this poster, which I never did. But we're... But we're Right. These weren't these weren't in the other. Right. No, okay. no. Yeah, so you'd have to get this one special edition and then rip the cover off. Um, I think we want to look through the newsprint one, but as far as this one, um, it's just some of the extras in it. It's at the very, back. very end of it. There was neat stuff in this. E each, each one had a different interior double splash. Yeah, each one of those individual ones had a, its own unique big cool image like this and this one prints them all i had this as a poster on my wall do you remember yeah we we, we shared a room forever and this was on and this and was I, on the wall and i stared at her and her constantly i mean yeah right and i wondered why loki was in there why do we care about the asgardian guy in the x-men i i didn't know anything about mojo mojo but i like the way his little hands are together like that i thought that was a pretty neat Drawing and, element. And I think something you had pointed out. To, see, this is what Liefeld should have done with that other foot that we talked about in a different video. Yeah. Like, just blacking it in. Anyways, but, like, the, the villains kind of go from, like, least threatening at the bottom to they, they progress. It gets more threatening as, oh, as yeah. a villain is. You know, like, Apocalypse is slightly higher than Magneto. Magneto and Sinister are kind of equal, you know, like... Obviously, Sentinels, Dark Dark Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah, that's a. I never thought of it that way. I mean, I don't know about like he was pretty significant in that. They like, could never beat him. They didn't beat him. They just buried him. An arcade. I, I don't know much about. He him. should just be not there. Yeah. Um, old school X Men in their kind of original outfits, outfits, blast from the past. Eh, it's it's cute. It's whatever. Not a big deal. Um, this thing. This was the in the version I had with Magneto, so I often stared at. I know, mean, several. <laughs> that's the thing. Jim Lee had his way of drawing those female characters that just made him the hottest things I've ever seen ever, and you know they got Psylocke up here up front, but I always thought this rogue that figure drawing was really really good. I liked it. Well, plus there's a little characterization going on over there, like she's looking kind of in sadness. It seems mm -hmm. over at what Gambit's here flirting with these other women. Yeah. Yeah. Jean Grey and I forget her. She's like a girlfriend. Um, not him. Right? I know why I can't think of it at the same time. She was never a major character. But you're right. There's some story like in there. I like Jubilee flexing next to Colossus. I like Iceman freezing the pool as Beast is yeah. about to jump into it. Cyclops twirling. And he's like watching over here like, yeah, that's that's my lady like screwing him. There's up. a version of Cyclops that I like. He's just pretty cool. Yeah. You know, Um Archangel back here, just it's just pretty awesome. Archangel's hard to put in any image because he always got to put his wings, and his wings take up so much visual space. He's always in the background. Yeah. Because what else do you do? I thought this was kind of interesting. Wasn't that? That's the name of the art studio. Yeah. That uh, Jim Lee um, homage. Um, yeah, that was a great. You know, it's just fun, like a swimsuit thing. Some people think it's tacky and stupid and pointless. Sure, it but is. it's fun. Yeah. Where did Jim Lee find... Like, around this time, he, he did these issues. He did all these pinups. But then he did, like... Around the same time, he did the, the X-Men card series. Mm -hmm. Like, he did every single one for every X-Men character. Where does he find the time, man? I, I think, hope he got paid a lot. I think he got paid really well, and that's why he was doing it. That's why he's a millionaire. Um, this one was, like... This was interesting because it was... After the first issue of X-Men, things to come. These were things that came up in the X-Men books um, in the series that Jim Lee was doing for for just his little run. With the exception of her. Which is who? 
I'm not 100% sure. Um, there's a, a character from the uh, Hellfire Club. Selene? Maybe that's it. I think that might be who that is. I don't know, but that didn't, that girl did not show up in the yeah. the books. Omega Red was going to be one of the biggest, coolest things you've ever seen. And for a second he was, but he really turned out to be a big, giant nothing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool. Like, you didn't know what that was at the time besides the skull, but that's Ghost that's Rider. That's Ghost Rider tying into the brood and to the story they're going to do. Longshot, he had come and gone in the comics as a major character long before I ever started reading, so I don't really know anything about him, so I don't have a connection to him, but people loved him. Yeah, and then these two, is that the Belladonna? Yeah, and, that's connected to this. And then that, I don't know, uh, nothing. That nothing it, that I don't it. know what that is. Um Interesting, you know, they, they knew what they were doing. Hey, you're going to do multiple covers, and each cover will have its own unique pinup. It'll drive sales because people will want them all. And it worked. Eight point something million copies. Yeah. That'll never be beat. Something I really loved and wish there was more of was uh, Jim Lee's sketches and kind of designs, figuring things out. These things are always profoundly interesting to me. Um, there's nothing really crazy. I actually really like this figure of Cyclops. I think that looks great. It's just, it's a sketch, but... It looks great. Is this, I'm, like, we just did a video, maybe if you're not watching these in the way we recorded them, but we just did one of Rob Liefeld talking about, like, the exaggeration of a character with the legs. Mm -hmm. This is kind of like the same thing. Like, his legs are longer and he's really tall, but it's done right. It is not as much of a difference. It's just basic from his ankles down. is not balanced. But it needs to be elongated. These are comic book characters, so they're... They're stronger, they're more physically fit, they're elongated, they're more dramatic, but that's exactly like you're saying. It's exaggerated, but it looks good. Um, and that was all for that. Um, and then that's the cover for issue two coming out. So that's the uh, expanded book. Did you have anything else on this one before we move on to the next no. one? All right, yeah, let's bust out that one. Again, that's the, uh, this is the uh, copy that I actually bought off the shelf and man I read this thing over and over and over because Jim Lee's artwork he'd been doing Uncanny X-Men for um, a long time before this and he just become at the time was the best artist I had ever seen out on any book ever in the history of ever everything he did was amazing and this was like the pinnacle of it in a way uh, time and maturity have kind of changed that a little bit but it's still great oh yeah I mean it's still great like like, there are better artists in certain ways, but, like, the the way he does things, and it's, like, so dynamic, and, like, I, I don't know. If I could choose an artist and the way they drew at a certain time on a certain book, it might be, like, putting this version of Jim Lee back on this book to draw another, like, 20 to 30 issues would be a dream come true. Yeah, I would watch him draw X-Men. He's technically a better artist now than he's ever been, I guess, but I don't care too much for... Batman comics and DC comics. And so I'll pick him up for his artwork sometimes and I'm just not as interested. But I come back and read this old X-Men stuff and I just feel like his art's better. Now that's on me. Maybe it's a nostalgia thing. I just... But then I've seen him do drawings of like Wolverine today. I'm like, it looks so much better. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I've, got a, I've got a distorted view. I'm not going to pretend that I don't. Let's get into this. Um... You know, the, the starting of it, he he does these kind of crazy technological ships and technology. It's not my favorite version of stuff, but it's obviously pretty good. It, it It's hard to do, like, weird... I've tried to do stuff like that, and I just, like, I can't think of it. So, like, kudos to him for being able to do some His of this His imagination stuff. with the technological stuff is... It works. Um, this is kind of like a... It's a lot of panels and a lot of text for an opening page... I, it's not, I don't think it's the best way to start a book, but they knew what they were doing because you go from that to that. Yeah. And that's, there's Jim Lee. That's why we're here. Is there like a better, more cooler shot of Magneto in comics? I can't think of it. Like, he's not wearing his helmet, um, but the rendering on the face, it just looks so good. I can't tell you. Like, if you didn't know who this character was, like, you are enthralled. Like, I'm... It's almost like the Darth Vader coming through the first time. Like, yeah. You know, like, this guy is powerful. Yes. He is not someone to be messed with. Yeah, and you're on board. You're like, okay, let's see. What else we got? And then this big face shot, I always just was enamored by it. By the, the black and white line work 
with the shading and then the coloring with these highlights of this underlighting. Yeah. I remember looking at that. I'm like, how, where do you even start to draw that? How do you even figure that out? Like you get it now older and you've drawn stuff. Like we get how to do it. I'm not saying I could produce that, but at the time as a kid, I'm like, I don't, I, how do you even do that? Yeah. The stuff on the nose with just like the, the straight lines, then he goes up here to the cross hatching. Yeah, it's just really good. It's really good. I want to pick up that Jim Lee Artist Edition, X-Men Artist Edition, which is just black and white artwork. Mm -hmm. um, that stuff looks amazing. Um, and the story, I mean, there's nothing really interesting here. There's just story talking lots. How many words are on that page? I mean, uh, man, lot. there's a lot. It's basically Magneto's back. He was away for a while. Now he's back. We got to be worried. And the, the governments of the world are scared. Yeah. So who, who are you going to call? Oh, of course. Oh, then. right. Yeah, not Venkman and. Yeah. Um, it's funny how this looks great, and at the time, I I, I still like it. Um, and you saw those crazy, amazing colors on Magneto's face in that panel there. Like, there's multiple colors given highlights. This is wild. Look at this beast. It's just flat blue, <laughs> flat. Like there, all these other characters have some highlights and some sheens and some glows there is nothing there it, i it's yeah. wild it doesn't that yeah I'm, isn't I'm, that weird i'm pulling out like the other version just to see if they did something let's slap different. that down right next to it let's go side by side and so again this is on newsprint and then this is a coated glossy paper and this is way more vibrant in every way but even still, that's just a flat color. No no highlights. And that has to be a conscious choice. I mean, I think you can see a little shading in here, barely. Okay, and so that is on there. You're right. I, they're just It's like a, if the, the lightest blue is like one way, then they took it up by 5% to do a little bit of tones. It doesn't reproduce that that well. I don't hate it, but it's just really interesting that it's just that flat color. Right. Um and seeing these two side by side again, just seeing the glossy, vibrant paper versus the newsprint. I, I don't know why I can't tell you why the newsprint for some reason looks better on some level. I don't I don't get it myself. But yeah. we'll keep that book handy. We we'll might need to reference it as we go through it. Um So one thing before we start going that I like to point out, and I think this is something you pointed out to me a while before, is on especially a bunch of these pages going forward, there's going to be a lot of panel work, but there's going to be one awesome image that you're going to see where if you were an art collector and buying like the original art, that's what you would want. And that's what you would want to put on your wall. I think we'll point those out as yeah. we go through. I'm sure that was a conscious choice on Jim Lee's part. Like people started buying his original artwork and you want you, what, what, what page do you want? Do you want that one? How much are you going to pay for that page there versus that? That's the money shot. That's what you're going to buy. So you're like, yeah, you're exactly right. Let's put a big, I think they would refer to it as an anchor shot, a big, awesome something of someone. I always liked, again, his female figures. Looking at this face, what in the hell is he putting all these lines rendering on here for? <laughs> they are so unnecessary. Like, I get if there's like a, a, a hard light source, and so you got some shadow through here, but what did all these cross? Even when I remember first reading this for the first time, like why are there so many lines over here? Is it just because he's bald and they need to put something on? Man, them? if anybody is good on Photoshop, you could put that in there and kind of like capture this color and then just paint it out and simplify it, and I bet it would look way better. Um, I got my iPad. I'll go do that right really now. Really unnecessary. And you know, one thing I didn't understand for the longest time. These eyebrows, that's an intentional, ridiculous thing. I'm like, why the fuck are they always doing that? But he was always originally created with some ridiculous eyebrows. Yeah, even like um, we our last convention we did, I did this uh, um, a commission, and someone wanted to be drawn with their face, making them look like Professor X, but they needed to have the eyebrows. They were wow, like, give really? them the eyebrows. I'm like, okay. Uh, I hate them. I don't get the point. Um more awesome. I another anchor picture. Another anchor picture. You're gonna have Rogue looking hot. I kind of like the energy in this these silos shooting these rockets, and that's a good picture of Rogue. But I kind of like that figure better. I like 
the simplicity of it, the simple drawing, the the movement of it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I like that picture of her. Yeah. I, and I always like that Iceman. That's a good figure. Um, so, yeah, they're going on. They're fighting. Um, oh, yeah. Another big awesome shot. Awesome. Awesome. But it's X-Men number one. You got yeah. an amazing artist. Let's give people what they want. And that Colossus looks pretty dang good. Archangel's looking badass. I again another I I find myself catching these smaller innocuous figures besides the big crazy ones that I like a lot and that little picture of Jean Grey that pose I love it yeah I love the energy right there you like you know he's in pain something's going yep on. yep he's getting nailed and um, then you got the other because they're all doing an assault uh, attacking in various stages and here these guys are coming underground. Um, I, I, I'm repeating myself. This shot of all three of them are great. I like these little ones. I I don't know why. I just love those little figures. Yeah, and like that form of Psylocke where they're kind of hunched over, like it wasn't like overtly like sexy or something like that. Like that's a hard pose. It's a hard pose. It's easier to draw the super sexy shot with the, the boobs and the butt and all that type of stuff. But she's very in character. She's sneaking. She's being quiet. She's in character. Um, but... Yeah, well, there can, we go. You got to have one. Though. Then you got to get the awesome shot of her. You know what's interesting is I did a little exercise not too long ago, a couple years ago, where I took a lot of these images, like this was one of them. I found an image of it online. I printed it out, and then I got out my light box table and traced just the body, just the figure, just to eliminate, not to make her nude, but to eliminate the clothes and the the hair and the, just to draw the figure and it looks weird. Yeah, it really does. And like that doesn't look weird for some reason. I like, I think the upper body looks great. The arms and the shoulders, but just this lower part, the way it's kind of all kind of connected, it looks kind of weird, but at the time it was, that's some hot stuff. Um, and talking about Psylocke and I think it was maybe just the version that Jim Lee did. Um, I think later, like people started making her hair more, like her hair bigger, her more hair wavy. Um, like he always kept her hair very kind of, I don't know, tight and refined. I, you, you I was going to say, I thought that it was like maybe pulled back together in a ponytail. And I don't think that's actually correct, but I see what you're saying. He kept it, not this big hair. It was always tighter and together, almost yeah. like ponytail ish. Like you were, you're not wrong. Like on this one, it's, kind of tucked behind her. I think I'll point it out as we go. Um, you're right. I never thought about that, but you're right. That was like a visual thing that he would do that made her stand out. That's a that's a good uh, good point out there. Um, this was interesting. You find out on this page that the X-Men are in the, uh, I almost said the holodeck, <laughs> which is basically true, the danger room, but they're supposed to be hunting down Professor X. But Wolverine, I mean, it seemed a little excessive, but he actually claws his way through the actual machinery of the actual danger room control room and shows up and quote unquote kills the real Professor X. I'm like, I I guess that's cool. A little yeah. unnecessary. That's a lot of stuff for Forge to fix. Well, that's Wolverine. For that me. is Wolverine. He's being a pain in the ass. Um, and then him, what do they think was going to happen? They 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 had a robot version earlier, like that got blown up. Yeah, you know, Gambit kissed yeah. Jean Grey, and you found out that was a robot. Both him and the professor, or her, Jean Grey, and the. Professor X robot in the danger were blown up. So Wolverine's like, well, they're done. I'll go get the real one. Um, I, I kind of like this where he's talking about like, she's like, oh, Gambit, you know, when he kissed her, like yep. that eyes, that grin. And he's just sitting here like, like remind me to drop a truck. And like, Professor's like, Cyclops, Cyclops. A big truck, a really big truck. Cyclops, God yeah. damn it. Yeah, yeah, it's like the deadpan humor. Um, that was a funny little writing moment. I like that. Um. Danger Room, session's over, Wolverine's had enough, he's going to go do his own thing. Uh, the story continues with them talking about... I always kind of enjoyed that face. That is a good face. Um, I uh, I always kind of like that one too, but that's a great face. I like the shadowed Wolverine. Mm -hmm. um, again, unnecessary lines everywhere. Eh, it's not the worst thing ever, but it's a little unnecessary. There's that big center poster like we were talking about. I already talked about that enough. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, back on Asteroid M. Right, for real. Um, <laughs> these villains combined with some government soldiers that were chasing them that Magneto took in. 
Right. The, these are mutants and these are humans. I, I right. Can't, I can't remember. Right. Yeah, you know, you're right. There were some mutants trying to find Magneto and some humans chasing them. And Magneto, he, the character had kind of abandoned his evil ways. He just wanted to be left alone. He wanted to be on his asteroid M floating he, around. I think he wanted to start his modeling career. Too. Probably, because he's a handsome old man. But this violence is brought to his doorstep and a mutant was killed in front of him. So he uses his powers to force this soldier's suit to point his gun at his own head and kill him. And Magneto is kind of realizing he has to, he can't just hide from the world. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's comics. Um, so the X-Men called into action. Anchor shot. Anchor shot. Love that Wolverine. Beast looks great, but love that Wolverine right there. I think he like got every major character like a cool defining shot. Yeah, oh yeah, you're not wrong. Um, so they're off to go. This is uh, related to an old issue of X-Men where Magneto sank a, a Russian submarine, and so he's digging up the wreckage of that submarine to collect the nuclear missiles from it to have weapons. Yeah. I'm actually surprised he didn't make this image bigger. Right. Like, it could be... Like, if I would have done I probably would have made that kind of a forefront, put panels around it, making that an anchor picture, yeah. and then you could still put the stuff around it, but... Who am I to but it's something to before. say that image still carries a lot of power and weight. Sure. I still really like it. Um, and he's kind of contemplative. He's thinking about what he did. He sank and killed people. He's actually regretful. He's remorseful, so he's thinking about it. I appreciate that. There's the submarine. He's pulling out the nuclear weapons when the X-Men show up. And uh, they're trying to appeal to his humanity, their past friendships. Yeah, her hair is like just more slick back as opposed to her hair. Right, there's a good example. Rogue's big, wild 90s hair and her, like, straight, simple... And they, they abandoned... That was just a Jim Lee thing. Like, they abandoned that on the character. But it's also really. character appropriate. Rogue is a wild kind of... Yeah. ...outspoken character. She's a silent ninja quiet. Mm -hmm. So it kind of fits in the in some way. Um, there's an interesting thing in, on, on this next page. These next pages coming up. A great... Um, Magneto freezes the X-Men's jet in the air, so Beast and Gambit jump out to distract him. Now, do you notice anything off about this page? Um, I didn't notice it for years. No. Oh, my God. His clothes, his jacket is 100% not colored in. It All is right. black and white. Hold on. They fucked up somehow and did not color. Right, slap that down right there. And I've never heard anyone mention this. Here's his jacket colored in, but it's just black and white. That's funny. It's weird, right? <laughs> <laughs> just a funny thing. I don't know that I noticed it the first time I read it, but at some point I'm like, well, somebody screwed up. Yeah. I don't understand. He, did he change the direction of these cards? Well, yeah. So Gambit charges them up and throws them. But He's like, let's see how you charge these. Char I won't charge these cards enough to kill. And there's the motion of them getting shot back now magneto controls metal yeah that's why are I'm they metal cards that's why i'm confused sure why not oh life failed crotch shot whoa what are we looking at it's a great shot it's i'm surprised he actually did that just for the if she was in like not a bikini or a bikini but like a swimsuit thing that had so much skin if it was just straight black leather spandex this wouldn't be so Weird. It's a great drawing. Like it's a great drawing, mm -hmm. but it really stands out as like, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I don't mind it, especially young prepubescent me. I was on board, but I, I think you could have done that some other ways. But it's fine. I'm sure, that went for quite a few bucks. I'm sure that sold a lot. I always like this shot of uh, Cyclops's face and the laser shooting. Um, I always liked him in the background there as Wolverine's charge. Yeah, like silhouetted with just the glow on his laser eye there. I always like this panel right here with the heavy lighting and shadows on the face. It shows real planes and three-dimensionality. I, I think that looks great. Um, uh, the fight goes on. Magneto tries to run. Rogue, they have kind of a history in the comics, so she tries to catch up and appeal to him. And he's she's kind of getting through to him, but the humans show up and take a shot with missiles from a jet hit rogue. So this is kind of underplayed in a way. Magneto detonates a nuclear bomb. Yeah, right? He detonates a nuclear bomb. This would be the biggest 
scariest thing to happen and it's never mentioned again ever and it's just this little kind of little panel oh he just blew up one of the missiles at least he did it over the ocean my god like yeah you think that would have some uh uh consequences um, and then just Magneto suddenly back and he's getting fixed up and they're talking. The X-Men got to go. Yeah. I liked him sitting there with the shadow. The shadow, you know, he's like, uh, it seems like my life is just going to be nothing but violence all the time. And then Rogue is in some hospital and. Genosha, right? Right. But there's this weird time jump from, he goes back up to his thing and re recovers and she's in a hospital but then, oh, the fight continues. There's the bad guys that Magne went and joined Magneto, and the fight starts again. This is a badass moment for Gambit, I gotta tell you. This uh, character shoots a grenade, he catches it in his hand and throws it back to right. her. Impossible, but badass. I wanted to point out, I always love this, where she flies up and punches that guy. Like, the, the, the power, you can see, like, she's swooping in, just knocks him dead. Yeah. You know, um, that's a hard angle, too. Good movement, good energy. Um, more great shots of Wolverine. Everyone likes to draw him. Uh, I liked, this was a bit where Psylocke, her uh, inner thoughts, she's explaining how she could use her telepathy to take this guy down, but she actually likes the physical part. She wants to get in there and physically beat somebody's ass. And I don't know, if she tackled me, I'd probably let her. Right. It, and this is a writing style. Like, there's so many words yes. in this fight. You know, and she's oh. thinking this. All in the span of, like, how long would that take? Like, Three seconds? Yeah. Yeah. That's the writer, Chris Claremont. He's very verbose. He wants to have lots of conversation. And that's where you get a lot of character moments. But it's it doesn't... I don't think it translates to kind of modern sensibilities. Yeah. That's a lot of talking all the time. And then it ends right here with Magneto showing up, um, declaring his intentions. I hope you've got a half hour to read all the words, all the words, all the words. At the time, I got to be honest though, I didn't mind. Yeah, I've maybe read this in its entirety once. Every other viewing of it was reading kind of the cool parts and just digging the artwork. But as far as reading the words, the one time I I, I had gone back and like just having looking through it for so long, I'm like I should actually read this, right? And I did, and it's it is what it is. Like you can kind of make sense to it. It's hard to read, and it probably doesn't make sense if you're not a comic book reader. Right. Um, you kind of have to know how comic books are written for it to make sense. You have to be familiar with the language of comics and how they're done. Yeah. To, like, why are they doing this this way? This is... Yeah. For uh, another example is uh, when I read the DC book Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know, that was written in, I think, the 80s. It's a really strange and weird book, and I barely understood it just because I understand how comics are made. I could see anybody else reading that storyline, which was huge right. in comics, and being like, what is going on? Right. Uh, the way the comics are done has certainly changed. Um, I didn't mind it at the time. It's, it's a little crazy excessive. But anyway, well, Johnny, we are 33 minutes into this. That went a lot longer than I expected. Holy God. But... This book meant so much to us. I was so excited for this to come out. It, the hype for it. I mean, I was going to that shop every day and they were actually hiding the books because people were, they would take them from the comic rack and hide them behind the magazines in the magazine rack to then go home and get money to be able to buy it. And so I would come in and ask them, did you ever get X-Men number one? They're like, yeah, I have it behind the counter. I'm like, why are you hiding it? And they're like, you guys are hiding it. Not me personally, but <laughs> the fans would come in and start hiding books. Um, this was the biggest thing ever. And at the time, it I felt like it it um, it matched, the hype matched my experience reading it at the time. Right. I don't read, this, this was around the time that I first started getting into comics. Like, I was aware of them, but... You know, and you and our other brother were reading them quite often. I'd look through them, but I was way younger. Yes. But I remember, like, this is when I really started paying attention to stuff. That's what grabbed your attention? Yeah. Yeah. So th this was around the time that comics were really a thing for me. Yep, I agree. It's uh, it's a major thing, and it's uh, it's got a legacy that, I mean, 8 million copies. It's the highest-selling American comic book. When you look at... Uh, copies of like manga that are sold this is left in the dust it's not even close and it's all because of multiple covers and the hype about it 
But that record will never be broken in American comics. No one will ever do 8 million copies of an X-Men or anything ever again. Yeah. But the industry and entertainment has changed way more. But great book. Go ahead and slap that back up here with it. A um, lot of fun. Great book. The nostalgia and the memories will just always live with me. So it was fun to look at. Yeah. Johnny, thanks for looking at it with me and of going on and on about it. It's fun. X-Men. If yeah, da -da, da -da, it's, it, it's hard for people to understand how big X Men were then at the time, and how the Avengers were kind of stupid. Oh yeah, they were so lame and boring and a joke. And now Avengers are the thing because of the movies. Let's be honest. And X Men's kind of like, I feel like anything X Men that's awesome in a lot of ways is riding on the how what a premier property they were at this era, and that's what most people think of, and it was kind of pushed there popularity to this day they're just not quite what they were and then the movies have kind of helped maintain that a bit but yeah it's hard to understate what the x-men were at this time they were the premier property of everything and really quick before we leave yep the x-men animated series that was heavily influenced oh yeah like these are all like wolverine gets a different costume in a few issues but like cyclops had a different costume like every you know gene gray did like all the designs that he did were translated into that. Yeah, that it was basically cartoon, the, and they're bringing that cartoon back. And I'll be interested in like yes. the same designs. Yes, the same kind of thing. Yeah, that cartoon was a hundred percent the Jim Lee version of the X Men, and uh, there was a reason because this was so popular. If you're going to make a cartoon, you're doing that version. Yeah, and yeah, we'll be interested to see what that new animated series is like. Anyway, uh, that's all for now. Thank you if you've stuck around. This is the longest one by far. Good lord. Um, but, uh, appreciate everyone, uh, watching this and chiming in. If you chime in, talk to us, give me a comment, tell me what you think about any of this. So that's all I've got for now. Yep. All right. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks. Yep.